while I'm ahead. I guess that'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> before, before I get started, though, I do want to introduce the two individuals that came with me with, from my family, two of my granddaughters. That's Laura and Valerie. Carol didn't make it this time, but she has promised that she is going to be in Minneapolis on the 2nd of September. really great. Great to be here. Great to see such a nice crowd. Great to see the enthusiasm. Some people thought the enthusiasm was going to die down uh, after the primary. <laughs> and, and I think I'm on the record of saying it's only the beginning, yeah. folks. <laughs> now, it, it is very exciting. Big things are happening. The other day I wrote an article for the website and talked about uh, a lot of big things happening. There are big things that are happening that are negative, but this is big too, and we have the answers to the problems that we have in this country. But there's, it's obviously building. If you look at the financial crisis that is building the other day, uh, you know Bernanke and Paulson was before the committee. I made the point to them that uh, the American people are upset, Every, everybody bit. has problems, and the government hasn't even admitted there's a recession yet. Oh. But all they have to do is get out of this town and find out how American people are forced to live and what they're up against and what, what's going on in this country, then they'll realize that we are not on the right track and we know where the right track is and that is to follow the Constitution. It's, it's really been a great year. Of course, the year has uh, in, ended in one way, and sadly, with the loss of Kent. That has been a sad thing because, as I have said many times, Kent Snyder was the one that I knew closely, and he was the one that actually did the significant amount of arm twisting that finally had me make the final decision to get involved. So we will, we will miss Kent. But uh, he really did play a significant role. He, he was uh, a friend, and he worked with me as well, far back as 1987. But we will carry on. The message is there, the organization is there, and the enthusiasm there, and obviously the need is there. That's the thing. They need our message. Exciting things that happened. I, I think the the reluctance I had uh, a year and a half ago getting involved was not so much that I had the slightest doubt about the message. I've never had a doubt about the message of freedom and liberty and our Constitution. I had I had doubts whether I was to be the messenger and the, and uh, to lead this charge. Also, I didn't know how many belonged and still existed in our remnant. Our remnant is much bigger than we ever dreamed. enthusiasm of the young people in the campuses. They've come alive with the ideas of liberty. Now, I don't do any measuring about the Main Street media, but I understand that they didn't give us the uh, best shake, that sometime we came up short. But what they didn't know about was, you know, you two or three dozen spammers, how you could spread our message around the country. And all of a sudden, the message has been spread. You know, I, I, one of the probably most interesting and uh, entertaining events occurred early in the campaign when I think there was somebody else on the stage, you know, or I can't remember all their names. There were a total of 11, you know, running. But I, I think he was a mayor of a big city. That's all I remember. <laughs> He was the one that car called me on, on the carpet, we'll and, uh, the and, and you know, there was a lot of booing and hissing. Obviously, you people weren't in the crowd. <laughs> but uh, lo and behold, I, I remember that evening, uh, I was a little uncertain what it meant. It really didn't disturb me that much because, you know, I've had uh, poor reception to a lot of my speeches over the years. <laughs> but I remember a few minutes afterwards, Kent Snyder came up to me and he whispered. He said, uh, he says, guess what? you're winning in the post-debate polls. <laughs> but uh, a couple of day, 
weeks later, one of uh, the mayor's uh, supporters came to me on the house floor and wanted to rib me a bit. He said, well, I want to really thank you, Ron. He says, you really set my candidate up, and he really got the points in, and now, you know, he, he was uh, considered by the mainstream media as being a leading, the leading candidate. And... Uh, ah! So I said, you know, I said in these last few days, it's pretty interesting that due to that confrontation, I probably got more attention in those three days than I had gotten in 30 years because of what he did. So that's what we can call a good unintended consequence of what people do. <laughs> But no, the results have been been fantastic. Uh, the response at the at the local level, at the student level. I, I can remember a uh, one of the early rallies occurred after the debate in Detroit, and uh, that was uh, we went over to the University of, of Michigan, and I knew we had tapped into something, and I finally realized that young people were listening, and they did care about and they understood something about the Federal Reserve System. <laughs> Please, we, I got the applause when we went after the Fed, but what really fascinated me is when they started pulling out Federal Reserve notes and burning them. <laughs> Probably the ashes are going to be worth more than the paper pretty soon at the rate we're going. So, uh, but, you know, the issues are coming into place. The two issues that I've worked on for the so many years, now decades, first it was the monetary issue associated with our economy and the business cycle. And then in, in the last decade or so, since uh, we as Republicans uh, have gone really downhill with the foreign policy, foreign policy has become a very important issue. So I have spent a lot of time on that. but. You know, the evidence is out there, and I think this is one of the reasons why there is such a strong response, especially with the young people, when they're realizing what they're inheriting. They're inheriting these problems and the debt and the entitlement system, and uh, inheriting a war that should never have been fought in the first place. So one thing I do feel good about is the fact that we have been able to reach many libertarians, many conservatives, many constitutionalists that really didn't have much of a home, and they didn't feel like there were enough of them and us out there to really take the position to show that our side of the political spectrum can be opposed to war. And that should be our position. That's the constitutional position. connect the problems with our foreign policy with our domestic economic problems. Because now, we as a nation have obligated ourselves to approximately a trillion dollars a year to manage our empire.